1994, the towns situated in Leavenmouth and Fife were suffering from the trauma of losing their once thriving industries. Unemployment brought about the all too familiar social ills associated with poverty. Problematic alcohol and drug use rose to the fore because it claimed lives and tore families apart. These issues were compounded by the overall lack of support for drug and alcohol users and their families. It was these very families, the ones that had suffered such terrible losses, which led the call for action. They created the drug and alcohol project Leavenmouth. Their aim? To provide a confidential, community-based, counselling, support, information and advice service to individuals, their families and friends, who are affected by substance misuse in the Leave and Mouth area. People that were involved at that time are still very much active in the community today. What was happening at that time for the original group? At that point, um, we were just responding to people in trauma. Families devastated by their loss. Nobody really gave much thought to why people turned to alcohol and drugs. There was a huge amount of shame associated with substance use. People were quick to judge and there was a real lack of empathy and understanding from both members of the public and professionals. Organised support didn't exist in Leavenmouth in the early 90s, so we helped them to create a service based on what they wanted. Way ahead of their time, these people knew what they needed and didn't need to be told what was good for them. They were clear that what they required was a counselling service. Since those embryonic beginnings in the east of Fife, DAPO has grown both in size and remit. Today the organisation employs counsellors, art therapists and recovery workers. Leaven's drug project has spread to serve all the communities of the region of Fife. Thanks to those forward-thinking community activists, counselling has become a key part of the Alcohol and Drug Partnership's menu of services. I've been aware of DAPO uh, being a, a resident of the Leavenmouth area from its inception really, so I did know about the, uh, the way that it was set up from really a ground spell, a community concern about the drug and alcohol problem in the area and then later being a drug worker in, uh, in Fife, known about the services that they provided. Currently in my role uh, as the Alcohol and Drugs Partnership Coordinator, we're a funder of DAPO and I think we've always welcomed uh, their ability to change and adapt to different circumstances. So even in more recent times, the recovery movement, they've really embraced that and worked with that uh, in, a, in the local area and expanded the range of services that they've provided. But I think as well they've kept at their core uh, the element of counselling, which is a key component for people uh, in need of help for uh, addiction to, to drugs and alcohol. And I, I think that's obviously been their strength, the, the way that they've built on that over the years has been very effective and they are a key part uh, of the service provision that we have in Fife. It's not just people affected by drugs and alcohol that are supported by DAPL now. Any young person who attends secondary school in Fife can access our counselling service should they need it. Now, people talk about traumas and ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, as if they were new. They are not new to us. This has been DAPL's bread and butter from day one. What's it like for teachers to be able to draw on DAPL's resources to support them in their work with young people in the schools? So here at Queen Anne High School, DAPL are an incredible resource for teachers and our pupil support department. Um, without them I don't know where we would be. Um, our young people are able to refer themselves, parents and carers are able to refer them and get them the support that they require. Not only are we helping with reducing the waiting lists for CAMS, but we are getting immediate support for the young people here at Queen Anne. Um, we have three incredible um, counsellors who come in, in and out of the school each week and they're able to provide support staff with strategies as to how to support the pupils here at Queen Anne 
and ensure that they are feeling comforted and they're actually being targeted in terms of their emotional health and any substance misuse issues they may see. Moreover, um, and more importantly for us as well, is that we're able to support families and community partners and staff with their mental health and wellbeing also. Hundreds of people a week come through the many and varied doors across Fife where they can access counselling and art therapy from DAPL. What might have been seen once as something only available to the wealthy and famous has become accessible to everyone. What's it like to manage a service that's grown to mean so much to so many people? Martin Demon is the very chap to ask. In short, it's an honour to manage a service like DAPL. I'm very fortunate within my work to work with some of the most highly qualified counsellors in the country um, who are really dedicated and committed to supporting those without a voice within the communities that we serve. There you have it. Whilst unquestionably DAPL has developed, expanded and become more professional in the last 25 years, what is clear is that the same values, commitment and passion that drove the Leavenmouth community members to create the original service is still very much woven into the fabric of the service. A healthy response to trauma. Let's talk about it. And let's make sure someone listens. DAPL was born in the community and will always remain deeply rooted in the community.